The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once pointed out that every bomb dropped, and this is the Vietnam era, of course, but that every bomb dropped was money taken away from education. Well, what happens when educational money is rerouted again instead to the police? Well, now it's police in our schools. Check this out. Uh, Judith Brown Dianus drops by uh, from the Advancement Project to talk about this. It's fascinating. Uh, check it out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. We were talking earlier about the, uh, the police riots, is, what I, is how I refer to these things, the police rioting in the streets, uh, principally against people who are protesting the treatment of African Americans and other minorities in the United States at the hands of police. And it sparked this huge conversation about over-policing, the nature of policing, defunding policing, um, you know, uh, <laughs> repeal and replace repeal policing. One of the things that we're not seeing, though, I mean, while we're seeing all these pictures and videos of police killing people, harassing people, uh, beating people of color by and large, uh, one of the things that we're not seeing is what's being done to black people in our schools, black children and the over-policing of our schools as well. Judith Brown uh, Dianus, Dianus is the executive director of the Advancement Project. Advancementproject.org is the website. Um, her, uh, Judith Brown's, uh, Brown Dianus' uh, Twitter handle is jbrown, D-I-A-N-I-S. Uh, the Advancement Project is at A-D-V underscore project. Uh, Judith, welcome to the program. Tell me about uh, the work that you, the Advancement Project, first of all, for people who may not be familiar with the Advancement Project, tell us about your group overall, and then let's get into what you're doing with regard to sure. policing in our schools. Sure. Sure. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, so Advancement Project is a national racial justice organization. We are the lawyers to the movement, um, but we also do communications and organizing strategy. Uh, our whole um, our whole piece is that what we want to do is build power in communities of color so that we can dismantle structural racism. So we work across the country on issues around educational equity. We also work on policing issues, criminal justice issues, immigration, and we all know for our voting rights work across the country fighting yeah. for suppression. Uh, in the area of um, police free schools, so we, with along with another organization called the Alliance for Educational Justice, which is an alliance of youth organizing groups across the country, have a campaign called Police Free Schools. For uh, 20 years, Advancement Project has been working to dismantle the school to prison pipeline, which started off with trying to stop the overuse of suspensions in our school that push young people out of school. And pretty quickly in, in doing that work with grassroots organizations, we figured out that there was actually a more ominous trend that actually young people were being pushed not only from their schools into suspensions, but they were being pushed directly into the juvenile and criminal legal system by the very mere presence of police in schools. So if you look at what happens in schools, we know that black students are uh, arrested at higher rates. Uh, black students represent 13% of student population across this country, but 31% of the rest they are also uh, not just arrested, but we've seen many instances of excessive use of force in schools against black students, black boys and black girls. And so our work has been uh, supporting grassroots organizations, again, students, I'm talking about like high school and middle school students who are pushing to put police out of their schools so that they can have learning environments where they can thrive. How did police get in our schools? I mean, I, I, I'm an old fart, I guess, you know, I, and I, I, I was in, in school mm -hmm. in the, the 1950s and 1960s. And, and it was a, you know, a lower middle class suburb, but it was an all white suburb. And, you know, I've heard people say, well, you want to see mm -hmm. what the world would look like, you know, with police reform, just look at any white suburb. I never once saw a police officer in, uh, in all the years I was in school. Yeah. Um, until I got kicked out of high school for publishing an underground newspaper <laughs> and they called the police. But that, you know, that and, and that was like, you know, a slap on the wrist, you know, go home. Uh, where, of course, that was in, you know, 1960, what, six, I think it was. Um, so where did, where did all this come from? How, how did we end up with cops in our schools, but particularly in schools that have large minority populations? 
Well, it's interesting that you mentioned the 50s because that's when we started to see uh, police being put in schools and actually in reaction to student protests. Uh, so we actually have a website called we came to learn.com came to learn.com that has the whole history of police and schools on it. And one of the things we know is that it started with police protests, but then in the 90s in response to kind of the war on drugs and the crime bill is where we started to see an increase in police and schools because there was an increase in funding for police and schools. So um, so everything that triggered what, what is now considered mass incarceration also triggered the proliferation of police in our schools, so much so that people may not know that not only does the federal government and state and local pay for local police to be in schools as what they call school resource officers, but there are school districts that actually have their own police departments. And so those are police departments wow. with a police chief, uh, with cruisers and sniff, drug sniffing dogs and um, tanks that they got from the federal government. And those Wait a minute, are you, are, you, are you talking about colleges or are you talking about high schools? No, I'm talking. No, I'm talking about high schools. I'm talking about school districts, oh K through twelve um, school districts that actually have their own police departments and spend millions and millions of dollars on it. And part of our challenge now is to rethink safety and to think about how do we put that money that we've been spending on police? Because when police are in schools, they will do what they're charged with doing, which is enforcing the criminal code. And so that's what the push has been: has been to get that money back to invest in young people this is this is remarkable it's it's like the uh, the old black codes have been reinvented in our schools in a way um, you say that you're you know That's that the advancement right. project right. is the lawyers to the movement um, what are the legal st I mean, you know, obviously there's a political conversation to be had here which which we're talking about I, I, I suppose but what are mm -hmm. wh what's the legal strategy for undoing this or is there one well, uh, yeah, there, I mean, there really isn't, other than what we use for regular police misconduct cases. As we know, it's very difficult to sue police departments, and so that there's, there is a lack of accountability across the board, and that includes in the school setting. Um, police often say they were doing their job, they felt threatened, and so they used excessive use of force. And so what we are doing instead is we are mounting organizing campaigns. Um, young people who are in the lead of those campaigns who are pushing on their parents and their school boards to get police out of school. So it is very much a political organizing campaign with young people leading the way. And and how how can uh, how can people participate in this? In particular, you know, white allies who who would like to see police out sure. of our schools. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So we um, so there's a few things. One is um, two of our, our websites. We have wecametolearn.com, which has a report on it that details the presence of police and some of the strategies for getting police out of schools. And then we just launched a new website called policefreeschool.org. Um, and there what we're doing is we're going to be collecting the resolutions that school boards have passed. Uh, so that people can replicate them in their own backyard because now we have several school districts, not only Minneapolis, but Denver, where we supported Padres and Jovenes Unidos for 20 years, just got police out of school. Oakland had a huge victory where Black Organizing Project was able to actually not just get police out of schools, but they eliminated the school police department altogether. So we've seen about hmm. 10 places where the where police free schools has won. And so we will be documenting that and people will have templates where they can take it and run with it.